This week, Google jumped into the AI arms race with the launch of BARD. The chatbot will compete with OpenAI's ChatGBT, which is funded by Microsoft. In a few short months, these chatbots have wowed users with the ability to answer complicated questions, draft emails and speeches, plan custom vacations, and much more. But as it improves, this technology offers immense promise and significant, some say, existential danger. Brooke Silva Braga traveled to Toronto, one of AI's leading research hubs, to meet some of the people building this brave new world. So yeah, so this is a, a, an experimental preview of a chatbot we've been working on powered by our generative language model. Okay. Nick Frost is a co-founder of Cohere. Like Google and OpenAI, the Toronto startup has trained massively powerful computers on trillions of words and asked them to talk back. Can it write call it a book report about war and peace. Mm. Okay, it can. War and Peace is a historical novel by Russian author Leo Tolstoy. In a major leap for computing, these models can understand and create natural language. It just wrote this. Yeah, but it's based on all the stuff that it's seen. The tech had been in research labs for years. ChatGPT's release last fall. Cheese, oh cheese, so luscious and bold brought it to an unprepared public. It's writing me a poem about cheese, because, and it's you know, pretty good. In the old school programming, we would write code to tell a computer what to do. We still do that, lots of people still do that. But another thing we do now is we write code to tell a computer how to learn what to do. And the way it learns is being shown many examples of what it should do. So in the context of large language models, the way that works is we get a huge amount of text. And then we show it a few words, and we get it to predict the next word. This simple technique turns out to give you something very useful and very powerful. So powerful that OpenAI's new GPT-4 does better on the bar exam than 90% of aspiring lawyers. These models write computer code in seconds and churn out blog posts on any topic that AI programmers haven't banned. They're becoming the newest arbiters of what ideas are out of bounds. And while chat apps are the current rage, other forms of AI... Now you can generate a video with nothing but words. ...will do much, much more. This is the biggest technological advancement since... I think it's comparable in scale with the Industrial Revolution or electricity. Electricity, Or maybe yeah. the wheel. Or maybe the wheel. Yeah. Jeffrey Hinton is known as a godfather of artificial intelligence. For the last 10 years, he's helped Google create AI and mentor the industry's rising stars, including OpenAI's chief scientist, Ilya Siskova, and Nick Frost over at Cohere. In fact, Toronto is a global AI hub today in large part because Hinton moved here 40 years ago when the Canadian government agreed to fund his unusual research. I was kind of weird because I did this stuff everybody else thought was nonsense. While others pursuing AI tried to program logic and reasoning into computers, Hinton thought it was better to have them figure things out themselves. The idea was to mimic the brain. With lots of practice, these virtual neural networks, illustrated here, would make the right connections to solve a given task. There were doubters. The big issue was, could you expect a big neural network that learns by just changing the strengths of the connections could you expect that to just look at data and with no kind of innate prior knowledge, learn how to do things? People in mainstream AI thought that was completely ridiculous. It sounds a little ridiculous. It is a little ridiculous, but it works. <laughs> it's all the real thing. Only in the last decade or so have computers been powerful enough to prove Hinton was right. His machine learning ideas applied to different kinds of training data now create all kinds of outputs. This, of course, isn't Tom Cruise, but a deep fake impersonating him. I went down to the office because they are making a robot of me. This isn't Andy Warhol's voice in the recent Netflix documentary, but a clone generated by Resemble AI. Click record and then read the sentence out loud. After a few minutes, in come between reading training text, it'll go ahead and build this in the background. Founder Zohab Ahmed had cloned my voice too. Habitat for Humanity which helps homeowners build homes alongside volunteers. Yeah, I definitely hear myself in there. Smile into the camera. A company called Synthesia had me read a script in front of a green screen. They used that video to create this digital version of me. 
We paired it with Resemble's voice to create a TV reporter who will say anything you type. The technology will only get better in the years ahead. Hello, Using everyone. this tech to the spread misinformation to seems Bangkok. inevitable. This is my very first day in Xinguana's agency. Using it to replace journalists and lawyers and accountants and radiologists and novelists and songwriters and painters. Well, that could happen too. It's going to take a whole ton of jobs. I think it's going to make a whole lot of jobs easier and a whole lot of jobs faster. I hear your answer in two ways. One, wow, it's great if it turns out that way. Mm -hmm. Two, maybe it's a little scary if the people making this technology haven't come to grips with the potential downfall hmm. of what it could do. Yeah, I, I think we try our best to think about what the true impact of this technology is. And the true impact of these advancements is the subject of a high stakes debate right now. Will AI quickly zoom past human abilities and become what's thought of as artificial general intelligence or AGI? Last month, OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman wrote, the risks could be extraordinary. A misaligned, super intelligent AGI could cause grievous harm to the world. But Frost and others say Terminator style worries are overblown. Large language models are just algorithms that write some smart sounding words. They don't understand even basic truths. Okay. What day is it? What day is it? It's Monday. It's okay. Monday. It just yeah. guess? It just guess, yeah. I don't think the technology we're building today naturally leads to artificial general intelligence. I don't think we're close to that. His mentor used to agree. Until quite recently, I thought it was going to be like 20 to 50 years before we have general purpose AI. Now I think it may be 20 years or less. Some so, people think it could be like five. I wouldn't completely rule that possibility out now. Whereas pre a few years ago, I would have said no way. Are we close to the computers coming up with their own ideas for improving themselves? Yes, we might be. And then it could just go fast. That's an issue, right? We have to think hard about how to control that. Yeah, can we? We don't know, we haven't been there yet, but we can try. Okay, that seems kind of concerning. Um, yes. What do you think the chances are of AI just wiping out humanity? It's not inconceivable. Okay. That's all I'll say. How, Hinton wonders, will we manage a technology that could give a handful of companies or governments such awesome power? And so I think it's very reasonable for people to be worrying about those issues now. Even though it's not going to happen in the next year or two, people should be thinking about those issues. For CBS Saturday Morning, still writing his own script for now, Brooke Silverbraga, Toronto. Good, two, for you. Good for you, Brooke. Yeah, yeah, right. But two questions, like, why are you building it, one? And two, why aren't you thinking about the possible impact? It's, the, it's this big question mark, and, and, and the rest of us have to deal building with it. Building well, to try to make life easier. I thought the bigger question was when Brooke asked, what do you think of the possibility of AI wiping out <laughs> exactly. humanity? And the guy says... <laughs> It's not, not inconceivable. <laughs> yeah, I would exactly. agree. I mean, my point exactly. Right. I don't think we can answer that in 10 seconds.